trade therapy. Yes, that's what I'm all about is trade therapy. And tonight we're going to talk about crushing, clobbering, and conquering the counter trend. Wow. So who am I and how'd I get here? I've been married to my husband for 41 years, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. And I have two beautiful daughters and I just acquired a son-in-law in August who is a software engineer and they live in Pittsburgh. We moved to the Gulf side of Florida in 2017 to be caregivers to my dad. And we had five good years for with him. He lived into his mid nineties. And when right after he died, a category five hurricane came through and <laughs> blew our roof off. <laughs> so we have been living in disaster recovery for 14 going on 15 months while I'm trying to make a living and trade and fix the house. It's been exciting. So I think thanks to everybody who has supported me through that. Now, mm -hmm. I think part of building our community is really getting to know each other. And I'm very interested in what people have done in their life and what they're doing in their life. For me, how did I get here? I spent most of my career in the IT industry doing business transformation strategy and consulting. I did a lot with business modeling and organization design. I was the chief strategy and marketing officer for a software IPO in 2001. And I just had a lot of opportunities that just fell before me. And I had a really exciting career, traveled the world, managed as a project manager, managed some very big international projects. So when I stopped that job, I didn't want to retire. I still don't want to retire. I want to have another career. And I decided creating, trading was it. I'm a really big biohacker. I've been biohacking since I was 16 and I worked in a vitamin store. And what I really learned in, in that process was, was that uh, biohacking and training is kind of a lot alike <laughs> in many ways. So we might talk about that sometime. Um, when we moved to Florida, I really needed to create an income where I could stay in the house and work from home with and take care of my dad at the same time. And I met Sean and started trading with Apiary. So that was seven years ago. I traded with them for six years. I met Dave because he was the wobble crew captain. And I um he taught me how to tr how to wobble and I really did well at it. I got me out of a very long drawdown for like multi-year drawdown in my funded account and pulled me back. And and so I really love Dave and this community, and I'm really excited about what we're doing in the future. And my other criteria is I really want to work with cool and smart people. That's why I like you guys. So we can hang out with like-minded people and make some money together doing it. So counter trend trading. What we're all about here is level one, crushing, which is what, why, and how. Level two is clobbering. The finer points of how and level three is conquering. When we where we're going with all of this in level two is we're going to talk about these kind of things of plan B, the apex and KPIs, building, the obligation mode, recycling, talent techniques, all of that is considered level two. Level three is how to capitalize and maximize profit when to load up, when not to, timings, everything, how to get out early, mid, and late market. Dave's been talking about that a lot lately. Maximum pro profit and the, the, all the, the, the plan we, none of us want to do, plan C. But what we're really going to focus on tonight that what starts this all off is level one, defining the counter trend. Why counter trend? some critical success factors, how, when, and which one to trend, to counter, pros and cons, some system interdependencies, and resetting to zero. 
but let's not forget stressing less. Who would like to stress less while we're trading, especially when it's running against you? Me. We're getting, me, yes. So um, as I go through here, I would like to invite every, anybody with questions to talk or um, I can't really see the chat. So you have to speak up. So let's start really with simply defining what is the counter trend. It means entering positions against the current price action, whether the counter, the trend right now is up or whether it's down. If you're going to counter trend with a trend, okay. let's say it's an uptrend and you're taking the positions where these little red arrows are. Can you guys see that? Does that show up on the screen? I hope where, where the trend is up, price yep, action is down. It. You enter at the bottom at the action points where the red arrows are and you're buying with the trend. If you're in a bear trend and you're going against the long-term trend, but it, you're, it's currently in a short-term bear trend, you would be entering at the price going down and you're entering and you're entering at all of these action points. But notice when you're in a bear trend, how hard it is to get back up here to your first position. So you've got the break even line and that's a real tool that we have in our toolkit for, for getting out of that. But I think this is when we all cry, let me out of here. How do you do that? So why would we want to counter trend? The real value I have finally experienced is it's all in the ad. So let's say that the trend is down and each one of these lines represents an entry and it's moving down. You wait on the turn. And as soon as it turns around and spikes up, it is like dominoes falling. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful thing because it feels so easy then when that happens and you watch your your watch the green light up on your screen and the pips are are racking up it's a beautiful thing so how do we get into that well there's pros and cons the real value of adding positions is it allows you to hit your goal faster and that happens because you've created more opportunities to enter than if you're in a build trade. Now, I happen to be really good at build trades, and I can find those opportunities. But as Dave knows, I don't enter enough. And that's why he wanted me to learn to counter trend, because it creates more opportunities. We also, <clears throat> excuse me, look at risk and, risk and reward balancing ratio we really need to have more entries in order to achieve the goal, especially if we're in a drawdown. You, if you, if there's a ratio that if you draw X down X amount, you need X plus so much to get back to, back to par, back to even. So the real trick here is to learn to like winning while losing. That's an expression you'll hear us talking about, but it means that we're winning even though we might be losing and it appears that we're losing, but we're racking up those pips. So some other pros include catching the momentum in the price action and of course our high probability setups with action points. Um, when the trend is strong and it's persistent, going with the trend is the best idea. It's a lot easier to counter trend with the trend. And that means if if you if the long term trend is a buy trend, price actions to sell, then you go buy. So that's how I think about it. If it's a buy trend, I'm going to buy only when it's selling. If it's a sell trend, I'm going to sell only when it's buying when it's long. That's how I simplified it in my mind because it got, it gets confusing. <clears throat> so um, the very best conditions in the very best conditions, the whole goal is to get in, get out, get done. And I think with our, our new strategy of daily goal of 0.25, it really is ideal for counter trend trading, because if you get into more positions, you can really hit your goal in one run. 
if you got if you have enough entries. But of course, using the break even line and securing your trades are the real trick. And we'll talk about that some more. There are some things to be cautioned against. First of all, what's the one mistake most of us complain about is going in too heavy too early. If you're too heavy, when you move the break-even line closer, this is particularly my problem. You have to be able to trust yourself to wait long enough that you, when you enter, the, when you move your slam into it to move your break-even line closer, it's not going to still continue to run against you. I would call that being overreactive to price action. One of the best things to do is to wait. Wait and watch. See what happens. Watch the market. The market structure hasn't yet established itself. Um, if it hasn't established itself to 50%, don't get in yet. Um, and why? Because if you get in too heavy too soon, the market can die and then you're stuck and then you're, you know, yelling, let me out of here. The risk management rules are really, really important. And one of the rules that really, really got to me, I learned it so well six, seven years ago, was don't let your losers run. So counter trending to me felt like I was violating the the rule of don't let your losers run. And when we talk a little bit about psychology later, we'll talk about that a little more. But that was probably my biggest objection for counter trending that and beliefs. I didn't believe I could do it because I had lost so many times trying to do it. And Dave was saying to me more than once that I was being defensive in the hot seat and that really, really bugged me. And I thought about it for weeks and I said, what am I trying to defend myself against? Why am, what am I defending? And the answer was clear. It was my belief. My belief was I can't do it. It doesn't work for me because every time I've tried it, I end up with this huge drawdown. I get stuck in a drawdown for years, blah, 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 blah. So overcoming that was really, really important for me. And I think that I've made great strides in doing that. When to counter trend? There's a couple things that are really important to know, no matter what the market structure is doing, you, counter trending with the long-term trend is easier because the force is with you. Simple, there's energy. The market is energy and you're with it. You're not fighting it, you're actually with it. The other time is with the KPI or at the end of a price cycle. When you, that's the appropriate time to enter. And we'll look at that on, on some graphs in a minute and some charts. So the rules vary according to the market structure. And this is where I think the complexity comes in. The first market structure we all know and love is the range. And the number one rule in counter trending with the range is on the zero one two three. The first pullback on the range is your optimal time. You have your best opportunity on the first pullback. You also have a great opportunity at the end of the price cycle, but in the opposite direction. When you're anticipating the bounce point, <laughs> excuse me. And what do we do? We always add an action point or a pivot. That's why I like to use the, the what I call the apiary pivots and somebody very kindly made me one. I really appreciate that um, because they really helped me see on the chart where where's the best place to add. The other market structure is in a trend itself, <laughs> such as a, a let's say, a, let's call that a long-term trend as opposed to a range. And um, what Josh likes to call candy. When there's a sufficient price cycle for five to 10, 10 pips and it's pretty consistent, that's great. That's candy. And we can, oops, we can just 
uh, sit there and pick off candy, I guess. Um, another time is in the trend is with post news or the big vertica vertical candle candle, which Dave always says, don't trust the verticality. <laughs> when you have a big vertical vertical candle on the reversal, it's a great time to get in and go the other way with against it and take ride it to the 50%. When you get to the 50 or the 50 at the 50 and for that's when you have a decision to make whether you're going to stick with it or get out. And finally, in the outside range, you can um, take a good position when with the first pullback on the breakout. You can smack in it, smack a Brandon on an outside range. This is one of my favorite techniques. I think <laughs> 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 who doesn't like to put smack. <laughs> smack it on the outside range but pretty effective the trick there is are you really at the right outside range or is it going to be a running market uh, also um, when you do that you need to secure your trades and moving the break-even line when you it's when you're counter trending you've got to make sure that you're securing your trades and moving that break-even line as soon as you can because it can turn around and bite you back when not to counter trend <laughs> do not end at, do not add at the end of a price cycle <laughs> going with it or going against it but don't add at the end of a price cycle number one rural right dave the um so on a range the more difficult opportunity for adding is on a range after the turn because that becomes a build actually if you think about it if you're not counter trending you're actually building when you can't recognize the kpm kpi which is the 50 50 at the 50 and we just had a long conversation this morning and think about how many people had a different opinion about where the kpi was so we're all interpreting that when we're trading, we're looking at the KPI and that's why it's important because if you don't know where it is, you're, you, that's how we get in trouble. The, another time when the range is if it doesn't break on the third attempt, it's a rejection, so get out. This is a good clue, something I need to work on, but I've recently really discovered it to be effective. If you pay attention, if it doesn't break, just get out. Whether you're going to be down a bit, it's better to be down a little bit than to be down a lot, right? Better, better than to risk out. In a trend, you don't want to counter trend early in the price cycle because that's a build trade. Um, if you are a trader at night, be very careful of the drifting market which as a trend trader, I love it. I love catching drifting market. You get in, you write it down, you secure your trade. I think this is what Dave does at night, right, Dave? So this is your secret for, for the night, time trading. Um, and finally, the strong persistent trend where there's no pullbacks. This is what gets us, right? When we can't, we're in, it's getting deeper. We're waiting for the pullbacks so we can at least get out or start doing fix it and it doesn't and it just keeps going and going and going so in that kind of market get out and don't counter trend in the outside range remember when i said we wanted on a zero one two three we want to we want to take it on a, on the first pullback but not on the third because that's when it can keep running we want to wait for confirmation at the KPI before we get in any heavier for the break even. This is really important because we don't want to be in too heavy too soon for our break even. Uh, then I actually made that mistake today myself. Um, and when it's in a riding the wave, we can't fight it. We can't just keep on insisting that we're we're right and and it's going to go the other way because when, if we're, if, if it's a marching market and it takes off and you're going the, you're going the wrong way, good luck. So 
especially in the summers, holidays coming up and the marching market conditions exist, be very cautious about that. So let's take a little quiz. I can't see the chat, so I want people to talk here. But which trend will you play in this chart? Can everybody see it? It's a daily chart. And here's, here's the action on this day right here. But would you say we are in an uptrend or a downtrend? Would you... Would you identify this as a long or short trend? Anybody? They're coming in. I'll help you. Uptrend. Uh, well, Cliff says uptrend. <laughs> An uptrend? Okay. Hilarion says I'm buying. Buying? Um, I think it's an up channel. Yep. Okay. I'm Pete selling. says sure. I'm selling. <laughs> <laughs> okay so here's our chart that we just looked at and here we are with it we zoomed out perspective now which trend would you play would you still call it an uptrend would you say the long term this is the daily the long term is this up or down uh Pete says sure uh, I would still buy. Nick is still trying to figure it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you need a wider degree. What's a KPI? Nick says. <laughs> um, I I'd think wait becomes, for the pullback. I think it, I think it becomes a little bit more diff difficult. Yeah. Well, it, the point that, is, this is the same chart, the same daily but we zoomed out and especially on the MT5 screens, which this was built on, it becomes a lot more apparent. So if we go back to the, uh, the slide before it, it looked like an uptrend. Zoom out, you might look at this and say, oh, it's a long-term yeah. trends down. So are you gonna play with the counter trend up or down? The other thing I'd like to point out here in this one, it on the fib line this day it was november 6th of this of this year um we're at the 38 we're just hitting the 38 there so is that going to be a bounce point or is that going to go on but we're getting close to that 50 50 mark so then which trend would you play same day this is now the minute chart so for those of people who said that it was they would buy this still looks like an uptrend. We have two consolidation-like areas. And then right here is the last couple minutes. I would buy in the 50%, yeah. So here's the pivot. If you're buying, this is where you'd wanna buy because yeah. this is a long-term trend. Here's the action point and you would buy. And exit at the purple line. Yeah. So there's the same chart. And then here, now which trend would you play? This is the hour. It's kind of a trick question, but we look at both, right? We look at the hour and then we, we take action on the minute. But here it's back, we're back to looking like a little bit of a of a long term. We can see where the KPI came up. I don't want to get into a KBI debate right now, but <laughs> but uh, here's the last in the hour. It looks like an up candle, but over here in the minute, it's just gone down. So that becomes the difficulty in understanding how the counter trend and perspective is extremely important and counter trending with the trend versus counter trending against the trend gives you higher probability setups. Understanding the perspective that you're at and looking at all of this from a different perspective also increases the odds that you're gonna you know, be riding with the force and not against it. It really is a mental game. It's what it's all about. 
Brandon talked about this this morning and an interesting statistic that I can't remember who he said, but somebody said that 60% of trading is the psychology and the psychology and the stress of price action going against your trade, especially when it goes against you a lot, is a lot of stress. It's a lot of, of a, it's a psychological impact that you have to learn how to manage. And there's some little tricks to that trade. It also affect, is affected by your beliefs and the beliefs that other people can fix it, but in your experience, it's never worked for you. Or you might be feeling that the fear of getting stuck in the big drawdown. If you have had a, a big drawdown, you're probably worried about that. The fear of losing the challenge or money. We just up the stakes a lot with our Forexing and all the challenges that we're entering and playing with real money. And if, if you think that you don't trade differently, well, let me rephrase that. You might trade differently whether you know it or not. So learning and the fear, overcoming the fear of losing the challenge and losing the money is extremely important in this um, in this whole mental game that we play. The other thing is how many times have we ridden it down and down and down because we believe it's going to turn, it's going to turn, it's going to turn, and then it doesn't. And then we have remorse and we say, well, it shoulda, coulda. And then we get a doll for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes when you step out and you look at what just happened, you think, well, I was in too heavy. But at the time, you don't think you are. So it's 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 a game. It's a mental game. And what we really want is peace of mind and a sense of control. But that's the catch. We can't control the market in the uncertainty and the unpredictability of the market, the you know the same thing as tossing a coin 50-50, any sense of control is, is a false sense of control. The only thing we have control over is when we get in, when we get out, and how we react. And that is part of that mental game. So the fear, stress, the beliefs, values, and norms that you bring to the table, um, are all a part of it and there's a physical aspect too and it's been proven that stress is carried by the vagus nerve which starts in your neck and runs all the way down and sometimes I can be in a drawdown and I'm fine absolutely doesn't bother me till later <laughs> but it doesn't bother me other times my palms will get sweaty my stomach starts hurting i get hot i just i have a physical reaction and it's really hard to overcome that one of the things that dave taught me that really resonated with me a couple months ago he said think of it as you're not losing you're just building for the next move and that was like an aha moment for me i'm not losing I'm just building for the next move. And when it makes that turn, I'm going to see those dominoes fall and it'll be a beautiful thing. And that really has done a lot for me for overcoming this, the whole mental aspect of losing a lot. I also wanted to give you a tip. I've been a meditator for a, a lot of years. And one of the things somebody told me a long time ago was four by four by four breathing, four box breathing. But as I was typing this, I thought, isn't that funny? It's like 4X. <laughs> 4X, get it? Four by four by four, our 4X breathing. So what, what this is, is a method of breathing to calm the stress. It literally, research has shown, will change your vagus nerve and the stress going through your body, whether you feel it or not. Try it sometime and it'll really calm you. What you do, really simple. The first four is you breathe in through your nose to a count of four. One, two, three, four. Then you hold four counts and then you breathe out through your mouth four counts. So it's in through the nose four, hold for four, out for four. Try it because when I'm having that little physical reaction, I talk to you about where, where I'm really starting to get into panic mode. If I do that, it will stop. 
And it's really, it's really a very useful technique. One of the things I'm working on is a trade therapy class for uh, 2024. And we're going to talk more about those kind of trade psychology and trade little tips for dealing with it. But there's nothing better for dealing with counter trending and winning or losing than to avoid getting into the hot mess in the first place. And how is it that we get into a hot mess and risk out position size? It all comes back to position size. And the, the more I trade, the more I realize it really is all related. How do you know you're, <laughs> you've got the wrong position size? If you're saying to yourself, you got no bullets left, we're too heavy, too soon. One of the biggest things you can do to prevent it is to not get, not move your break even point too early and not go into too heavy, too early, moving the break even line. Because if it keeps going and you've already smacked into your break even line and it doesn't hit your break even line and it's going the other way then you're going to run out of bullets so that's a really important tip we also usually don't recognize when we're in too heavy until it's too late and that's why we need plan a plan b all to avoid plan c now forexing this is a whole different ball game with forexing because there are so many different accounts rules and sizes that can vary so be very cautious to not blow your position size because you might be doing okay in your parent account but your children account are not are not aligned and that's a way that you can get into the hot mess over that another way is to failure to recognize your ptp placement for both um, at action points, but also to maximize your your uh, profits. What do we call that? High probability setups. If you focus on your high probability setups for counter trending, you that's that's one way to avoid the hot mess. Incorrect price cycle decisions. I think the bots have really helped us figure out price cycle or measure them. It's I know it's forced us to measure them, but it's also really helped us understand what the importance is of them and the impact in 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 making your decisions of when to enter and when to exit. Resetting to zero is much better than risking out. Rob just led a class on this. I think it's in the early bird tapes the of the classes but he had some very interesting statistics on where he calculated that it's much better to reset to zero than to risk out and finally not being able to confidently recognize when the market structure has changed and therein lies a challenge for a lot of us. I think that some of the clues are the KPI, after the news, large vertical candles, those seem to be obvious changes that we can look for, but sometimes it's not quite so obvious. But of course, the best way to avoid getting into a hot mess is once you get into the green, secure your trades in the green, in the right place as soon as you possibly can and let them run, let it run. Zero take profits major, major tool. How do we put it all together? This chart's a little complicated, so let's break it down. Here's how we crush it. If you're buying, if this is a bull trend, long-term it's a bull trend, but we're in a short-term bear price action. So here we are in some, in a bear price action. The bears are winning. We're entering at all these little red, this is actually a trade I took on November 6th. <clears throat> you, you're entering at each of these action points and it's, it's you know, going up, it's going down, you get in, it goes up, it comes down, you get in, it's getting in, you're getting in, seven layers deep. 
and I'm waiting on it to turn and I'm waiting on it to turn and I'm waiting on it to turn. Now, what am I not doing here? I'm not getting in too heavy at every layer. I'm just getting in light at each layer and it's still going against me. But what happens here? We got a lower, a higher low. <laughs> and that's the first clue that this is maybe over and we can wait, <laughs> wait and see. So we start up again. You might think, oh, great. It's going to have my break even, but it didn't quite cover my break even. So then it goes down again, take a few more entries and then we're playing the game some more and then it comes up. And if I've secured my trays, I might hit it there. If I secured it too high, I didn't, but it comes down again. It comes down again. It comes up again. And you're still in that game. Secure your trades. And here you go. Max profit. That's what it looks like to crush it from if this is a minute chart, this is probably an hour. That's probably about 60 candles. And that's a ride. That is that is the up and down roller coaster right there. When you spend you spend all the time waiting on the turn and then when it comes, you want to secure it and write it out. One of the mistakes I used to make is I as soon as I got down here, I'd get out and then it would, as soon as I got out, it would go my way because I didn't have enough tenacity, staying power to stick with it because of that psychological component. But also if I was in too heavy, I was forced out. And as soon as you get out, so right in here in this turn is a really, really critical spot. So the decisions that you have to make to take action. How do we do it? It's really pretty simple. We assess the market, we identify action points, we select the position size, and we decide. What, what's involved? When you assess the market, you look at the trend, the time frame, the KPI, and whether this is a range, a trend, or an outside range. You identify action points, Look at proper trade placement and proper exits. So you have your plan A, your plan B. You select your position size. You're measuring the price cycles. You're looking at risk versus reward. You're laying out your plan A, B to avoid plan C. And then finally, to make the decision, you look at the three pieces of evidence and you wait on the high probability entry and then you get in. You gotta get in. <laughs> <laughs> something other something else I used to do is just oh that's great I'll just watch <laughs> you're not in you're not going so here's our little process you're in the trade how are you going to manage it now what two things can happen it can go your way or it can go against you if it's going to go your way if it goes your way you're going to add at the action points you're going to look for proper placement of the break even line. You're going to secure the trade and you're going to take action at max profit. Looks really simple, doesn't it? If it's going against you, it's a little harder. The caution is to not get too heavy too soon. You want to move your break even line closer. You want to reset to zero if you have to, because remember, it's better to reset to zero than to risk out and you're waiting on the turn and you're writing it out. So there's some critical success factors that are involved in counter trending. Uh, critical success factors are a strategy term and they really just are what are the what are, what's involved and that is imperative that if you want to have success, you need these things. And I don't care if you're a beginner or if you're a full-time trader making your living this way. There are some components that are absolutely critical to your success if you're going to counter trend trade. One of the first ones is learning our trade the fun lingo. We have our own language. <laughs> people who are new or people who watch us probably laugh, but we all know our language. And it's really important that we understand how it all ties together. The market structure, absolutely key and fundamental to pick which trend to follow. And if you pick wrong or 
you pick against it, you're just kind of trending the other way. But understanding market structure and market structure as you're trading and adapting to it is a critical success factor. Knowing how to assess the trend in the longer time frames, like I demonstrated, is important. We look at the daily, the hourly, and the I like the 15 minute, and we act take action on the one minute. And zooming in and out is important to look at those trends. Don't just uh, glance at the daily and say, oh, it's up. And if you don't take anything from this presentation, I hope you'll remember that, that perspective is key. Know how to identify your action points and proper trade placement, part of our language. <laughs> and I think uh, we're all getting pretty good at that. Know how to measure your price cycles. The bots help with that. Know how to manage your position size. I think we're all working on that. And we're really looking forward to Brandon's presentation next week to talk about that. Give us some tips and help us all get better on position sizing. Know your one, two, threes. Use proper placement of the break-even line and evaluate and learn from your losses. There's no shortcuts. You have to put in the seat time. You actually have to trade and you have to take some losses and you got to learn. And that's the way we need to think about it is every time it's a loss, it's, it's a learning. So... I put together some references if you um, are interested because there's so many aspects of counter trending and it really seems to be a convergence of a lot of things we talk about all seem to converge with counter trending. And um, there are two particularly good presentations on action points. Brendan just did one and there's the, the link to like. <laughs> And Rob did an excellent one too recently. Both of these I think were done in November. So they're really, really recent and, and hot off the press. We have um, three to three and 50. Josh did a presentation on the three and 50. And then of course, Dave's new course, which I plan to do over the Christmas break. Market structure. Dave's got original class on market structure is still apropos and break even nick did an excellent presentation on the break how to move the break even line closer and the impact of that and i think in counter trending as a critical success factor i think the break even line the tool that we use is absolutely the best thing <laughs> it's made it's really saved me many many times and it, it, the visualness, what I like about it is the visualness that you see the line, it's like a goal line. And and it um, it also tells you how, how to add more, when to add more. It's really wonderful. Um, early bird trading. We talk about this stuff every day on the early bird trading call, which Rob, Josh, and Pete, Pete are leading. And there's the link. You can find it on the dashboard, but everybody is welcome to join. It's uh, seven o'clock Eastern time. Um, trust the process. Pete did a really good class on trusting the process. This was one of my initial issues with counter trending was I just didn't trust the process. And I really had to understand all the little nuances and in the ins and outs. Pete's, Pete's presentation on trust is really excellent. Why trades fail. Duke is an expert at assessing and going back and looking at, at why, what went wrong. And he shows you that on his night training sessions. If anybody uh, wants to see him in action at night training, he offers that frequently. And finally, we have the Trade the Fun class Discord channel and the YouTube. And I hope you like it. Literally like it. Yes, literally <laughs> like it. So that's it. Any questions? That was solid. Very, 
professionally done. Excellent. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, yeah there's awesome. a lot of. Sorry, so, Dan. Yeah, then like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, Thank um, making your community resources. Yeah, I we can't click. Well, I couldn't at least click on the links. Uh, you can't right now, but this is going to be posted. So when you go, when it's posted, the link should work. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, if you they're high, they're that. hyper. Yeah, I set them up as hyperlinks, so they should work, but they're not going to work now because they're not online. They're on my computer. Okay, so you'll post this in Discord. Yeah, well, David, when will that be up? Uh. A uh, couple hours. Okay. Couple and hours. Josh keeps telling me that I should copy my link, but I don't have a way to do that. You won't have a link for a couple hours. Okay. <laughs> and then you just check back at the calendar and it'll, it'll be up on the calendar. Okay. All right. So in a couple hours, Diane, you can go there and, and uh, click on the community resources and that should take you there. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is great. Everybody is echoing the the sentiment that you you um, thank you put a lot of effort, a lot of work into this. They really appreciate it. Um, but I think my favorite comment along those lines is that um, somebody was joking about all the different terms that we use, and Nick said that he think he thinks you used almost all of our jargon terms in your presentation. <laughs> I think so. Oh, I worked hard to do that. I really did because it's all integrated. That I think is one of the things that was my realization as I was going through it, because really there's a lot of complexity. And what I realized is it's the convergence of all the things we talk about, all our jargon, all the things we try our best to do when we're in a live trade, right? And the pressure's on. Yeah. It's, it's this to me like... is refining the wheat. What was that? This to me is refining the wheat. Refining the wheat? Wheat. The wheat. Yeah, like, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I like it. I like a uh, Logan makes a good point, Diane. If you take a picture of it with your phone, your phone should convert it to hyperlinks too. Ah, good thought. If you wanted to, you know, or wait for a few hours. If you don't want to <laughs> wait, do it now. <laughs> take a picture. <laughs> yeah, it was wheat, yeah. not weed, Pete, not weed. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, Me Megan, for every for every Dave term she used, she got a Dave dollar. So yes, I was paying. Oh her. yeah, you didn't tell me that was the criteria. Wow, that's <laughs> a bonus. I have to go back and see. Ding ding ding. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank you, Megan. See, is anybody any, anybody have any questions? Um, on on the. Um, I have I have a question for everybody on the call, and that is. <laughs> How many people think they are counter trend traders already? Well, that's a great question. Put a Y in the chat. If you, a, if you yeah, like put a Y in the chat. Well, my question, Megan, is at what point in the presentation that really convinced you to counter trend? I don't understand the question. Yeah, it kind of broke up there, Cliff, a little bit. At what yeah. point, what? In the in the trading, convince you to counter. Trend. Oh, oh wow. so at what point in your trading convinced you to counter trend? Um, because Dave made me. <laughs> I was like, I think I know the answer to that because it's one of my favorite. The answer parts. is Dave made me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's one of my favorite parts of the entire presentation from a personal standpoint. And and Megan, <laughs> when you said, um, that you had realized what you were trying to defend i love yeah. that because i remember that in the summertime we'd have those passionate um psychological conversations and i had to kind of just get 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 i don't know brazen for lack of a better word with you and say you're getting defensive why are you defensive and and it was, and then you had to take a step back and ask that same question. And you finally asked that question of yourself 
found that you were defending. What am I defending? Because I didn't yeah. feel defensive at all. But, but what once I you really... realized it, yeah, yeah, that was my favorite part of your journey so far is that you you not only recognized it, but you you recognized it, you realized it, and then you transformed into you embraced the change, right? And you didn't keep defending that that you were right. And it wasn't a matter of being right or wrong, but you embraced the change. And well, so that's actually, what your journey, Dave, you know, act, is, is awesome. Actually, Dave, I surrendered. I surrendered to it. Oh, so I, really well, just, so I say embrace, you say surrender. I really yeah. just said, okay, okay, <laughs> Megan, get your act together, right? You know, like just do it. But yeah, embrace, and, and now I'm embracing it because I'm having more success with it. And I've had a, I, I had a, a big loss day the other day, but it's the only one. I used to have them all the time. I had one this month, but I also have had days where I made 4%, 6% in our Forexing, but on, se you know, on several accounts, but still it really adds up. And I know that the reason you wanted me to fork on this was so that I would learn to add more entries. The values in yeah, the app. Well, yes, for you specifically, but I honestly feel like every trader should have this in their in their in their arsenal, because at some point the market is going to go against you. I yeah. don't care who you are; the market's going to go against you. So, how do you work yourself out of it? And counter trend trading is just a skill set, and and my my belief that every good trader should have right and and should be able to to counter trend trade and not freak out and i love this that you also adopted the i'm not losing i'm building mentality yeah right? it's a and reframing because it, it is a reframing because you're mm -hmm. not losing you just need to strategically build wait for the market to to turn into your favor then take advantage of it when it does right and it mm -hmm. takes so much stress pressure and un unnecessary um adding and unnecessary um trading uh, when you are in build mode versus panic mode, right? And yeah. nobody trades, nobody trades good when we're in panic yeah. mode. Yeah, in panic so, mode. And, and that's part of the um, learning not to get into panic mode. And sometimes I'm not, but sometimes it, it, it I am. And um, learning how to cope, or, but more how to avoid the hot mess is what I call it, is a much better way. <laughs> Agreed. Learn Agreed. how to fix it and avoid the hot mess. And and the uh, the other thing is, I'm probably always going to prefer trend trading because I am good at building. A lot of people want to be better at building. I'll be glad to help you with that. Um, it just that seems to come natural to me. But it's also because that's how, in the first six years of trading, that's what worked. So I yeah, did more. Is, it was my strength, is, right? So I did more of what worked. But I could have, you know, 19 great profitable days in a month and one day that it goes against me and I can't fix it blows the whole month. And therein lies, I think, the trader's dilemma. And um, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people have that. And so Megan has come today full circle. And so this is a great accomplishment for her to actually not only embrace the change but teaching how it's helped her in her trading right and so this is basically for me what i have envisioned from the start for traders like me again for traders um who are struggling with a concept that they may or may not even know they were struggling with it i don't think megan actually knew that she needed counter trend trading in her trading nope, i didn't to to make the change adapt and incorporate it into her core trading methodology or what she likes right to call now. dependencies or, you know, her critical success factors was that she incorporated that into her trading. And now that she has this, another arrow in her quiver, so to speak, she can rely on it when the time comes. She doesn't have to rely on it hundred percent and nor you should, but she has it in her arsenal now. And so, um, thank you for not only trusting the process, 
but allowing it to 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 work through this and to figure out what you need as a trader to get better and then sharing that with everybody i think that's to me it, it means a lot and i'm sure everybody um feels that as well so i appreciate it yeah. well i have a plan for the level two and the level three so there will be a follow-up class awesome on on level two um, counter trend. Uh, yes, and then today is three. crushing. Level two is clobbering. Ah, level I three is conquering. Well, where's canoodling? I want to canoodle. Canoodling. With, oh, <laughs> wow. I left that one out. Canoodle with, with counter trend. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, Nick. <laughs> um, any last comments or questions before we uh, before we part ways? Um, There'll be a quiz tomorrow when you all trade. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a quiz <laughs> hey uh well and i'm excited i was putting together my presentation tonight and i did do a quiz for the first time ever on zoom so i'm like oh i'm gonna so tomorrow in my fast track class uh there will be a quiz so now nobody will show up it's just fine i just get to sleep alone, sleep in i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right all right guys um if nobody else had any other if nobody else have any other questions, I love it. Um, thank you, Megan. Um, I can't wait till till uh number till level two. Um, and I really, really did a great job of um putting a lot of effort into this and it, it really shone through so tonight. So again, a couple hours tomorrow. Uh remind everybody to go and, and like your video tomorrow. And uh let's uh let's get you let's get let's please, get the likes on please it. Please like it. <laughs> please like Thank it. you, Megan. I only have one day. It's kind of a disadvantage. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. You did the you did the presentation I always wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time, Joseph, you can do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you. All we'll right. see you in the morning. All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye.